Hello, welcome back. We're still on day two at Beaver Creek, and I'm with Mike Berkey, the VP of Corporate Development over at Sitka Gold. Mike, good to be with you. Yeah, nice to meet you. First time on the channel, so why don't you just give a brief intro for those who uh, are not familiar with the story, and we'll, we'll dive in. Yeah, so I'm with Sitka Gold. Sitka Gold is a junior mining company exploring mainly in the Yukon. Our, our flagship property is the RC Gold property in the Yukon, where we've made a discovery of two gold deposits so far to date. We have other assets in North America, uh, Burrow Creek in Arizona, Alpha Gold in Nevada, and Copper Mine River Project up in Nunavut. So we're diversified, but we're very focused on this discovery we've made in the Yukon. Yeah, good. And I, I, I can sort of see why, given the uh, draw result you announced literally today, it looked pretty nice. Yeah, exactly. We've been drilling there for a number of years. We announced our initial resource back in January of 2023, and since then we've been expanding one of the two deposits, the Blackjack, and we just released a drill hole, the visual results of a drill hole, because we intersected visible gold from surface, basically four and a half meters, was the first visible gold we saw. We had over 40 occurrences down to a depth of 680 meters. We were no. drilling down plunge of the deposit to try and get an idea of the depth extent. And uh, yeah, it proved to be a, a great looking drill hole. All right, well, I'm gonna overlay um, that, that hole on, on the screen so investors yeah. can, can soak it in. Um, look, why don't we just go, just to begin with, just talk a bit, a bit about the cap structure uh, of the company. Because obviously you're at an all time, or not an all time high, sorry, you're at a, a 52 week high. You're, yeah. You haven't been at these levels since about 2021. Is this yeah. just off the back of that one amazing? No, we've been, you know, we've been slowly uh, going up in value. Um, our share prices suffered at different times, just like everybody, but we've slowly been increasing. Our, our uh, um, market cap has doubled in the last year and we closed today at 26 and a half cents. So it's been a positive impact by the drilling that we've done at this blackjack deposit on our RC Gold Pro property and so yeah we've been pretty good at uh, keeping a constant news flow we're putting our money in the ground drilling more holes and expanding this deposit so that's what folks like to see and even in tough markets we've had a, a positive effect but uh, you know like everybody we think we're still undervalued yeah, yeah of course <laughs> that's uh, probably the the main quote of the conference right yeah <laughs> uh, well most conferences but look I, I think I think to an extent, uh, there is a massive um, disparity between valuations at the moment in the junior mining space. Yeah. So I think I think that is fair enough. Um, why don't we set the scene a little bit more? So obviously you're in the Yukon. Um, you're near another company that uh, we've had on the channel a few times, which is Banyan. Yep. Uh, obviously there's Victoria Gold in, yep. in, in that region as well. And th these are quite synonymous for having pretty large scale, but lower grade deposits, right? So. Um, and it's very similar, we were actually just talking before, it's very similar to Fort Knox as well, which is an absolute beast of a beast yeah. of a mine. Yeah. Um, why, don't we, why don't we just talk a little bit about that? Because it's, you've, you've got a pretty decent sized resource already, albeit you know, around what, 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8, depending on which deposit you're looking at. Yes. Um, but then you're also finding really high grade stuff. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about what the rocks look like and, and what what how are you thinking about this? Yeah, geology lesson. We're in the Tombstone Gold Belt, and that is a belt of granitic rocks that are 98 million years old, and they host deposits such as Fort Knox, the Eagle Mine. Our project is hosted in those same age intrusive rocks, as well as Banyan is associated with them, and of course Snowline Gold out to the east of us. So there's a common geological history to these, and as you mentioned, Fort Knox, Victoria Gold, the existing mines, their grades have been lower grade, kind of 0.6 grams per ton, um, but they've been successful um, and been able to make money. Our blackjack deposit is 0.83 grams per ton, uh, the initial resource. Um, so that's a nice bump up, you know, 20, 25% higher grade than some existing mines. But the narrative around these deposits has really changed and that's not necessarily triggered by us, but by Snowline Gold. And interesting, I've known Scott Perdall since he was a, a youngster. Uh, I know his dad very well. Um, when Snowline was first going out to drill, Scott said to me, I hope we hit some high grades like you guys are getting in the blackjack. <laughs> kind of ironic. So, yeah. you know, they've, you know, kudos to them. They've, they've found a fantastic deposit, but it's also changed the thinking around these intrusion related gold deposits. They're not necessarily half gram, 0.6 gram deposits. You know, their resources come out at better than a gram. 
Ours is 0.83, but the resource expansion drilling that we've done, we've hit a lot of higher grade intersections. So we expect the resource to expand and potentially go up in grade as well. Okay. All right. So you released the resource last year, right? When the uh, 23. 23, yeah. So yeah. last year, yeah. Um, so, so what's happened since then? Because obviously you've, you've, you've started to now get, yeah. get some drilling back. So t talk to me about the campaign since the resource. Yeah, so the resource was in January 2023. Yep. So we've had two seasons of drilling since then. We can drill year round. It's a road accessible project. So we typically have been starting up in February, doing a few holes, taking a little shutdown for spring break up and then drilling all summer. So we've had two seasons of drilling, additional drilling focused on that higher grade blackjack deposit to try and define the limits. We still haven't done that. It's open in all directions, um, but we've continued to intersect great, great intersections and expand that deposit. So that's been the focus, um, but we've had a recent acquisition of a significant property that adjoins our deposits as well. Okay. All right. So in terms of meters in the ground since the resource, I'm just trying to think, when, when can we start yeah. thinking about, you know, the next steps for this kind of company? Yeah. So the initial resource in, in Blackjack, at least, was based on 22 holes, 7,500 meters of drilling. Yeah. Since then, we've done about double that amount. So about 14,000 meters of additional drilling. So obviously, there's the ability there to redo that resource and expand it. So that's in our future. Um, we've also, as I mentioned, acquired some other ground. So we have a lot of other targets on the property that have seen previous drilling. And we think with, without a huge amount of additional drilling, we can start developing resources there as well. So the future plan is to keep focused on the blackjack, understanding it and expanding it. Um, but also we're going to start drill testing some of the other targets and building resources elsewhere on the property. Okay. Um you're talking about snow line there. I mean, uh, what's the comparison at the moment in terms of where you are and where they are? And what's, their, what's their market cap? What's your market cap? What's the difference? Yeah, our, our market cap's around 75 yeah. million. I can't count high enough for theirs. It's around <laughs> 800 million or yeah. something. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, you know, so on the basis of their drilling, you know, they've been able to raise a lot of money and they've advanced their project a lot quicker. Mm. Um, you know, both projects have their advantages and disadvantages. You know, their advantage, it's a beautiful, big, high-grade deposit. Um, our project is very road accessible, um, very well located, two-hour drive out of Dawson. And we're earlier stage. They've done a lot more work than us with their drilling. They have four or five drills going. Okay. We have two, so. But it's fair to say that you're trying to emulate that sort of that, oh, absolutely. You're, you're looking and for that type of deposit within. Yeah, they're the exact same styles of deposits, yeah. same type of mineralized system. So, yeah, the eye on the prize is, you know, finding better grades than typically you find in these systems. You know, they've found the highest grade intrusion related gold deposit to date. Mm -hmm. I think we're on to the second highest grade one. Nature doesn't like working in spikes, you know. <laughs> if they have a, you know, plus one gram deposit, the other deposits have typically been down here at 0.6, you know. There should be other deposits, you know, on that same kind of curve. Yeah. And we're kind of filling in the gap, but closer to Snowline than, say, Fort Knox. So okay. grade, grade is super important in, in any type of mining project or deposit. So we're, we're really excited to see the grades that we are in the Blackjack. Someone was saying to me, uh, if grade is king, and this was quite a nice quote they said to me earlier actually on another interview, if grade is king, continuity is queen. What's continuity like within the deposit? Yeah, well, that's where I just mentioned this, this drill hole that we did the press release on. We've got visible gold at four and a half meters depth, 40 mm -hmm. different occurrences all the way down to 680 meters. So, and typically these styles of deposits are continuous. They're not spiky as far as gold. So you do get a kind of good distribution of gold throughout it. So that's one of the characteristics of it that make them, you know, good deposits to be able to mine and be predictive about them. Yeah, okay. Fairly easy open pits and then... Open pit and then, of course, 680 meters depth, you know, yeah, where we're hitting the deposit there. still and it's open at depth. That's definitely, you're getting down into the underground world. So mm -hmm. that's certainly the grades we're seeing. You know, we don't know the grades. The assays aren't 
out yet for this whole 68, but we have other drill holes that are fairly deep too. We've hit grades that could support an underground operation potentially. Mm. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, look. Why don't we just talk about what the what the plans are at the moment then? How well funded are you at the moment? Um, what's the rest of this year looking like with the drill bit? How many meters? If, and yeah. I, I guess we'll go on to really what what do you want these outcomes to be? So we're sitting here. In 12 months time at Beaver Creek, what, what do you want to be able to tell me? Yeah, so uh, right now we're still drilling. Um, we're going to drill till the end of October. Uh, initially, we budgeted for 15,000 meters of drilling this year. We're a little over 7,000, so we probably won't reach that 15,000 meter plateau that we aim for. That was because we took a bit of a slowdown in the summer. Yeah. Um, so that's fine. Um, we're going to drill till October. We're well financed. We just closed two financings, a flow through and a hard dollar financing, uh, $3.3 million and 5.5. So we're financed through this year and next. Okay. Um, so certainly we're in a good position. We'll look at starting up the drilling again. Like I said, we can drill year round, it's road accessible. So we might start up again in early February, March. Uh, we'll kind of evaluate that after this year's drilling done till the end of October. And then what I want to come back to you is I mentioned we have a, a lot of other targets on the property. We've been very focused on the blackjack, but with this financing and potentially more down the road, who knows, we can expand the project. It's very scalable. We've got different targets that are nicely separated in an eight by five kilometer area, so pretty compact. Yeah. So we can uh, logistically service all those out of the same camp. And we hope to be able to come back and say, we've found another deposit and we're starting to define that. So I can envision having a, you know, we have two deposits to date. I can envision, you know, next year, hopefully we're on to another one. And then the, the snowball keeps picking up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The scalability then it, it, it ramps up pretty quick. Actually. Yeah. Good. All right, well, Mike, thank you very much for coming on and giving us an update. Yeah, it was great. Thanks. Thank you.